The John C. Stennis Space Center SSC is a NASA rocket testing facility. It is located in Hancock County, Mississippi, United States, on the banks of the Pearl River at the Mississippi-Louisiana border. As of 2012, it is NASA's largest rocket engine test facility. There are over 30 local, state, national, international, private, and public companies and agencies using SSC for their rocket testing facilities. History The initial requirements for NASA's proposed rocket testing facility required the site to be located between the rocket's manufacturing facility at Michard Assembly Facility in eastern New Orleans, Louisiana, and the launch facility at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Also, the site required barge access as the rocket motors to be tested for Apollo were too large for overland transport. Additionally, the Apollo motors were too loud to be tested at Marshall Space Flight Center's existing test stands near Huntsville, Alabama. A more isolated site was needed. After an exhaustive site selection process that included reviews of other coastal locations including Eglin Air Force Base in Florida plus islands in both the Caribbean and the Pacific, NASA announced formation of the Mississippi Test Facility now known as Stennis Space Center on October 25, 1961, for testing engines for the Apollo program. A high terrace area bordering the East Pearl River in Hancock County, Miss, was selected for its location. NASA entrusted the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers with the difficult task to procure each land parcel either by directly purchasing the land or through acquisition of a perpetual easement. The selected area was thinly populated and met all other requirements, however, before construction began, five small communities Gainesville, Logtown, Napoleon, Santa Rosa, and Westonia, plus the northern portion of a sixth Perlington, and a combined population of seven. 100 families had to be completely relocated off the facility. The effort acquired more than 3,200 parcels of privately owned land 786 residences, 16 churches, 19 stores, 3 schools and a wide assortment of commercial buildings, including nightclubs and community centers. Remnants of the communities, including city streets and a one room school house, still exist within the facility. The 13,500 acres 55 square kilometers site was selected on October 25, 1961, on the Mississippi Test Facility or Pearl River site. On December 18, 1961, NASA officially designated the facility as NASA Mississippi Test Operations. The test area, officially known as the Fee Area, is surrounded by a 125,000 acre (506 square kilometers) acoustical buffer zone. The facility's large concrete and metal rocket propulsion test stands were originally used to test fire the first and second stages of the Saturn V rockets. The facility was renamed again to Mississippi Test Facility on July 1, 1965, became a part of the Marshall Space Flight Center. Starting in 1971, all Space Shuttle main engines were flight certified at Stennis. On June 14, 1974 the site was renamed National Space Technology Laboratories, a name that continued until May 20, 1988 when it was renamed for Mississippi Senator and Space Program supporter John C. Stennis, with the end of the Apollo and Shuttle programs, use of the base decreased, with economic impact to the surrounding communities. Over the years other government organizations and commercial entities have moved to and left from the facility, in the balance providing a major economic benefit to the communities. Topic rocket Propulsion Test Complex The Rocket Propulsion Test Complex is a rocket testing complex which was built in 1965 as a component of the John C. Stennis Space Center. The rocket propulsion test complex played an important role in the development of the Saturn V rocket. 
The A1, A2 and B1, B2 test stands were declared a National Historic Landmark in 1985. The NASA Engineering and Science Directorate ESD at SSC operates and maintains SSC's rocket test stands. Topic A1, A2 test stand. The smaller two of the original three test stands at Stennis Space Center, the A-1 and A-2 stands were built to test and flight certify the second stage of the Saturn V, the S-2 pronounced S-2, the launch vehicle for the Apollo program. The two stands are similar steel and concrete structures are roughly 200 feet 61 meters tall, and capable of withstanding thrust loads of more than 1 million pound and temperature of up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit 3 degrees Celsius. Each test stand can provide liquid hydrogen LH2 and liquid oxygen LOX in addition to support fluids, gaseous helium GHE, gaseous hydrogen GH2 and gaseous nitrogen GN2 as purge or pressurizing gases. Construction began in 1963 and was finished in 1966. The A test complex also includes a test control center, observation bunkers, and various technical and support systems. Topic: 1960s. On the 23rd of April 1966, workmen at the A2 test stand successfully captive fired for 15 seconds the SIIT structural and dynamic test vehicle for the Saturn V second stage in an all systems test. This was the first test of a flight weight S2 stage. The stage, largest and most powerful liquid oxygen liquid hydrogen stage known, developed 1 million pounds of thrust from its five Rocketdyne J2 engines. This test also marked the first operational use of the A2 stand. The first full duration firing of the S2 flight stage occurred the 20th of May 1966 when SIIT test fired on the A2 test stand for 354.5 seconds. LOX cutoff sensors initiated cutoff automatically. The firing passed all major test objectives with the exception of the propellant utilization system. This was the fourth static firing of the SIIT. The stage developed 1 million pounds of thrust from its five hydrogen-oxygen powered J2 engines. Topic: <laughs> SIIT rupture. A static test version of the Saturn V second stage SIIT ruptured during pressure tests at SSC on 28 May 1966, and five North American aviation technicians monitoring the test received minor injuries. The accident occurred when the hydrogen fuel tank failed under pressure. SIIT, which had five hydrogen-oxygen J2 engines capable of generating 1 million pounds of thrust, had been tested May 25 in ground firing but stopped firing after 195 seconds when a hydrogen link leak caused automatic cutoff. At time of the explosion, technicians were trying to determine cause for the hydrogen leak. No hydrogen was in the tank when the explosion occurred. Under the direction of MSFC, a board of inquiry headed by Dr. Kurt H. Debus, director of Kennedy Space Center, convened on the night of May 28. Immediate investigation revealed that the second shift crew, not knowing that the liquid hydrogen pressure sensors and switches had been disconnected, had attempted to pressurize the tank. Believing that a liquid hydrogen vent valve was leaking, the technicians closed the facility by blocking valves. This had caused the vehicle tank to become overpressurized and burst. On 30 May 1966 the board released its findings after two days of inquiry. The fuel tank of the S2 stage had been pressurized beyond design limits. 
there was a need for tighter controls over MTF test procedure. Following the destruction of SIIT, NASA extended the S-2 battleship program until July 1967 SII-1, the first flight S-2 stage scheduled for static firing at MTF, left Seal Beach on July 31, 1966. The first flight model of the Saturn V vehicle's second stage arrived August 13, 1966 at MTF completing its 4,000-mile voyage from Seal Beach. Workmen immediately moved the stage into the S-2 stage service and checkout building for inspection and preparation for static firing. At MTF on December 1, 1966 North American Aviation conducted a successful 384-second captive firing of five J-2 engines, the first flight hydrogen-fueled engines, developing a total 1 million pounds of thrust. During the test, number two and four engine slam arms did not drop, resulting in the successful gimballing of engines one and three only. The test included the recording of about 800 measurements of the stage's performance, including propellant tank temperatures, engine temperatures, propellant flow rates, and vibrations. On December 30, 1966, MSFC technicians at the MTF test stand conducted a static firing of the first flight version of the Saturn V second stage, SII 1. This second test firing, like an earlier firing, lasted more than six minutes. Topic 1967. On January 11, 1967, initial post-static checkout of the SII-1 stage ended at MTF. On January 27, 1967, the SII-2 stage left Seal Beach, California, to pass through the Panama Canal and on to MTF. After its journey lasting 16 days, the S-2 would arrive at MTF for two static tests. The SII-2 stage arrived on dock at MTF on February 11, 1967. The SII-2 stage, part of the second Saturn V vehicle as 502 scheduled for launch from KSC late in 1967, was scheduled for testing at MTF late in March 1967. On February 17, 1967 the first full-duration test of a cluster of uprated J-2 engines, S-2 battleship test No. 041, lasted 360 seconds. On February 20, 25, 1967 workmen at MTF completed construction of the S-2A1 test stand, and the Corps of Engineers accepted beneficial occupancy with exceptions. On March 17, 1967 technicians fired the S-2 battleship stage for a main stage duration of 29 seconds. On March 31, failure of a prevalve to close caused program officials at MTF to scrub the first attempt to static fire the S-2A1. SII-2 stage, battleship testing of the S-2 battleship test stage equipped with five uprated J-2 engines ended in late March 1967 with a full duration test of approximately 360 seconds mainstage operation. Summary these two test stands tested and flight certified S-2 stages and J-2 engines until the end of the Apollo program in the early 1970s. Topic: 1970s. It was announced in 1971 that the center would be performing tests on the engines for the new Space Shuttle program called the SSME. The A1 and A2 test stands, originally designed to accommodate the much larger S2 engines, were modified to accept the smaller SSME, and testing officially began on May 19, 1975 when the first such engine was tested on the A1 stand. 
The center continued to test engines for the duration of the shuttle program. On the A1 and A2 stands with the final scheduled test occurred on July 29, 2009 on the A2 stand. Topic 2010s as the shuttle program is phased out, the A1 and A2 test stands are seeing new use testing the next generation of rocket engines, including the J2X engine designed to power the SLS upper stage, with the first such test occurring on December 18, 2007. Stennis is continuing to test Aerojet Rocketdyne AJ-26 rocket engines for Orbital Sciences Corp. of Dulles, VA, which has partnered with NASA to provide commercial cargo flights to the International Space Station. Orbital's maiden flight to the space station launched from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia September 18. Orbital's Antares rocket was powered by a pair of AJ-26 engines. Topic B1, B2 test stand The B1, B2 test stand is a dual position, vertical, static firing stand supporting a maximum dynamic load of 11 mlbf. It was originally built in the 1960s to simultaneously test the five F-1 engines of a complete Saturn VS-1C first stage from 1967 to 1970. During the Shuttle era it was modified to test the Space Shuttle main engine Stennis now leases the B-1 test position to Pratt & Whitney Rocketdyne for testing of minus 68 rupees engines for the Delta IV launch vehicle. NASA is preparing the B-2 test position to test the core stage of NASA's Space Launch System (SLS) in late 2016 and early 2017. The SLS core stage, with four RS-25D rocket engines, will be installed on the stand for propellant fill and drain testing and two hot fire tests. On the 17th of October 1966, MSFC shipped its SIC All System Test Booster (SICT) to SSC for use in checkout of a static test stand and for use in static firings. Workmen loaded the huge booster aboard the barge Poseidon for the 1,000-mile river journey. Six days later the SICT reached SSC. All future firings would be accomplished at the B-2 stand at MTF, an all-systems test version of Apollo, Saturn V first stage, SICT, went into the B-2 test stand at the Mississippi Test Facility on December 17, 1966. Stage electrical and mechanical hookup to the test stand began immediately. Static firing would occur in early 1967 to demonstrate the facility checkout system. Topic 1967. On 13 February 1967 Corps of Engineers personnel completed construction of the SICB-2 test stand at MTF, following an extensive systems, subsystems, and total integrated systems checkout of the B-2 test stand at MTF on March 3, 1967, workmen successfully fired the SIC battleship, all systems stage for 15 seconds. This SICT test, the first MTF SIC firing, proved the total compatibility of stage, mechanical support equipment, and SIC test facilities. A second SICT firing lasted for 60 seconds on March 17, 1967. This firing validated the flame bucket water flow pattern of the B 2 test stand and ended the facility's checkout test series at MTF. Boeing personnel removed the SICT from test stand B 2 at MTF on March 24, 1967, following post static checkout, test stand refurbishment, and facilities modification. A3 test stand NASA has begun construction of the new A3 test stand at SSC. 
The A3 stand was to be used for testing J2X engines under vacuum conditions simulating high altitude operation. A3 will also be operable as a sea level test facility. However, because the Constellation program was cancelled in 2010, the stand is expected to be unused after its completion. The A3 stand may however, be able to be refurnished to test a new mission when needed. In 2014, journalists writing for Bloomberg News and The Washington Times criticized the continued construction work on the $350 million A3 test stand, and characterized it as a wasteful earmark by Mississippi U.S. Senator Roger F. Wicker. <laughs> E-test stand complex In the 1990s, a new test complex named E was constructed to test a variety of new small engine and single, multiple components and concepts. The E test stand complex consists of four distinct test stands. E1 test stand as of early June 2014, the E-1 test stand is non-operational pending the completion of an investigation into a rocket engine failure on the test stand on the 22nd of May 2014. Topic: History. In 2012, Blue Origin tested the thrust chamber assembly at the E-1 test cell for its new 100,000 pounds force kilonewtons thrust B-3 liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen rocket engine. As part of Blue's reusable booster system RBS, the engines are designed eventually to launch the biconic shaped space vehicle the company is developing on the 22nd of May 2014. An AJ26 rocket engine under test on the Stennis E1 test stand for a future Orbital Sciences Antares launch failed and caused major damage to the E1 test stand. As of 10 June, neither NASA, Orbital, nor Aerojet Rocketdyne have released any additional information on the extent of the damage, nor time frame when the three test cells in the E 1 test stand will return to operational status. In June 2015, Aerojet Rocketdyne signed a contract with NASA to upgrade the E 1 test stand so that the multi element pre burner and main injector a the R-1 rocket engine could be tested there, with a goal of first flight of the new R-1 engine after 2019. Description The stand is composed of three individual test cells. E1 Cell 1 can handle liquid propellant and hybrid based test articles up to 750,000 pounds force kilonewtons of thrust in a horizontal position. E1 Cells 2 and 3 are designed to support LOX and LH2 turbopump assemblies for testing with high pressure propellant feeds. E2 test stand The E2 test facility at Stennis is a multi-position cell that supports two separate test stands cell 1 and cell 2, one for testing horizontally mounted engines and one for vertically mounted vehicle stages and or engines. Cell 1 can support engines with up to 100,000 pounds force 440 kilonewtons of thrust while Cell 2 can support vehicle stages with up to 324,000 pounds force 1,440 kilonewtons of thrust. The facility can provide liquid oxygen, liquid nitrogen, liquid hydrogen, liquid methane, refined petroleum RP1, H2O, gaseous hydrogen, hot 
gaseous hydrogen, gaseous oxygen and gaseous nitrogen, E2 cell 1, originally known as the High Heat Flux Facility HHFF, was constructed in 1993 to support materials development for the National Aerospace Plane NASP. .The E2 test stand will be modified after 2013 to support liquid methane engine testing, with funds being provided by SpaceX, the Mississippi Development Authority $100,000 using funding from state bond issues, and NASA up to $600,000. As of October 2013, the SpaceX funding commitment to the methane modification project has not yet been disclosed, as the contract has not yet been finalized and executed. The methane modifications will become a permanent part of the Stennis test infrastructure and will be available to other users of the test facility after the SpaceX facility lease is completed. The most recent test completed on the E2 test stand, as of October 2013, was a 2012 NASA test of chemical steam generators. Beginning in 2014, SpaceX conducted tests of their liquid methane, liquid oxygen Raptor rocket engine on the E2 test stand. Initial testing is limited to components of the Raptor engine, since the test stand is not large enough to test the full Raptor engine, which is rated to generate more than 661,000 lbf vacuum thrust. SpaceX completed a «round of main injector testing in late 2014» and a full power test of the oxygen preburner component", for Raptor by June 2015. E3 test stand The E3 test stand consists of two test cells for component and pilot scale combustion device testing. E3 cell 1 can support devices up to 60,000 pounds force N thrust in a horizontal position. Propellant supports includes LOX or gaseous oxygen, hydrocarbon, gaseous oxygen, gaseous hydrogen and hybrid. E3 cell 2 can support devices up to 25,000 pounds force N thrust in a vertical position. Propellant configurations are similar to E3 cell 1 with the addition of hydrogen peroxide based devices. A series of tests conducted in the late 1990s eventually led to the commercialization of hybrid rocket motors. Test firing an American rocket company AMROC hybrid rocket motor at NASA's Stennis Space Center in 1994. E4 test stand The E4 test stand consists of four 32-foot-tall concrete-walled cells and an associated concrete foundation, a 1,344-square-foot hardened and conditioned signal conditioning building, a 12,825-square-foot high bay with 10-ton bridge crane, shop area with 1-ton bridge crane, and a 7,000-square-foot blast hardened test control center, and two 1,400-square-foot foot raised floor control rooms. The site also includes underground deluge water piping, underground power, data, and control duct banks, and potable water. The E4 hard stand system was designed to accommodate up to 500,000 pounds force engines and powerpack systems testing in a horizontal configuration. The E-4 test stand was proposed in the year 2000 to be located near the H-1 test stand. H-1 test stand In 2001 the Pentagon's Ballistic Missile Defense Organization proposed construction of a $140 million facility at Stennis H-1 test stand to test its proposed space-based laser to begin in the first quarter of fiscal year 2002. 
The facility was to be used to evaluate beam quality, efficiency, and power levels for a prototype megawatt class hydrogen fluoride laser. In 2007, British manufacturer Rolls Royce plc has been operating an outdoor aero engine test facility built on the old H1 test area. Rolls Royce constructed the facility due to noise pollution concerns at its UK testing facility at Hucknall Airfield near its headquarters in Derby. In 2013, a second test stand was opened by Rolls Royce. Topic <laughs> Gallery. Topic. <gallery> Tenant facilities In 2005, the centre was home to over 30 government agencies and private companies. By far the largest of these were elements of the United States Navy with some 3,500 personnel, which was far larger than the NASA civil servant contingent. Some of the prominent resident agencies include U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration The National Data Boy Center is a part of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's National Weather Service NDBC designs, develops, operates, and maintains a network of data collecting buoys and coastal stations. topic US Geological Survey The US Geological Survey Hydrologic Instrumentation Facility topic United States Navy The Naval Meteorology and Oceanography Command or NMOC, serves as the operational arm of the Naval Oceanography Program. Headquartered at the SSC, NMOC is a third echelon command reporting to Naval Information Dominance Forces previously United States Fleet Forces Command a branch of the Naval Research Laboratory The Naval Oceanographic Office comprises approximately 1,000 civilian, military and contract personnel responsible for providing oceanographic products and services to all elements within the Department of Defense. The Department of the Navy, Office of Civilian Human Resources, Stennis Operations Center, Navy Special Boat Team 22 and NAVSCIATTS Naval Small Craft Instruction and Technical Training School. Topic: <laughs> University. Mississippi State University Science and Technology Center. Mississippi State University Center for Battlefield Innovation. Mississippi State University Northern Gulf Institute Mississippi State University Geosystems Research Institute Mississippi State University Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative The University of Southern Mississippi's High Performance Visualization Center The University of Southern Mississippi's Department of Marine Science Mississippi State University – Industrial Technology Department Commercial Rolls-Royce Outdoor Engine Testing Center United Launch Alliance Engine Testing The Lockheed Martin Mississippi Space and Technology Center Topic: Former tenant organizations. Mississippi Army Ammunition Plant. Topic: 
Infinity Science Center The Infinity Science Center is the public NASA visitor and science museum for John C. Stennis Space Center. The 72,000 SQ foot facility is located adjacent to the Mississippi Welcome Center near the MS LA border. Admission includes a behind the scenes bus tour of nearby Stennis Space Center. The themes of the center's interactive exhibits include NASA, space, planets, stars, weather, Earth science, space travel and exploration. Displays include a full-sized International Space Station module, a cutaway model of the Orion spacecraft, and components from a space-flown minus 25 rupees space shuttle main engine. Outdoor displays include an F-1 rocket engine, a Tsunami Boy, U.S. Navy Riverine training boat and the Apollo 19 Saturn V first stage rocket booster acquired from NASA Mission Assembly. The Infinity Science Center officially opened in April 2012 to replace the old 14,000 SQ foot Stenosphere Visitors Center. Topic: Stenosphere. The museum and visitor center for the Stennis Space Center was known as Stenosphere, but upon the imminent opening of the new Infinity Science Center, closed its doors to the public on February 15, 2012. Unlike Infinity, the Stenosphere building is located within the grounds of the Stennis Space Center. Exhibits focused on the activities of NASA, space, space exploration, science, geography, weather and more. Many of the exhibits from Stenosphere have been moved into the new Infinity Visitor Facility. See also